<laughs> no. Now we're recording. <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> it's live. It's okay. I did this one other time with somebody. And all, all the way through? Out of I... halfway. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is take two with Greg Rojas. I just, um, he was r- literally right in the middle of a story and I cut him off because I realized I hadn't even hit record yet. So we're going to start over. <laughs> we were just talking about the weather and how freaking hot it is yeah, right, it was, in Petaluma. But I, I want to hear about this because you were talking about a, a pool that you just put, like a, what is that, a stock, a stock tank? Okay, what is pool. that exactly? It's like, a galvanized metal tank and um, they use, usually use for uh, uh, livestock. To, oh, so they to like get a, get a drink, drink of water. like yeah. horse trough. Yeah, kind of. Kinda, it's, there's there's elongated oval ones. And yeah, then there's round ones. So we got a round one, and it was a birthday present, and we made it into a swimming pool, and hooked up a filter to it. Yeah. So it has like a Doughboy above ground pool filter. Yeah. And then it has chlorine, and you know we have a screen for it, mesh screen, and we had you know get all the bugs out and shit. And that is so cool. I yeah. feel like I I was thinking about how I wanted to pool in my backyard but i didn't want to do the whole in-ground yeah and it's cool and you know i have a six-year-old so she jumps right in and she's in it and i get in it and you know it's not fucking cold oh it is cold (laughs) yes i was like wow it's not even cold (laughs) it takes me about 10 minutes to get in there you have to jump all in like yeah or just like hold your breath or something i did yesterday you know but you know the days because it was so hot you know 97 but you know, before that, uh, you know, it's definitely super cold. Well, and also it gets so cold at, well, not yesterday, but usually it gets really cold at night, right? So for right. a small pool, it's going to cool off pretty quickly. Yeah, and the metal and it's stuff, you know, it'll just... why um, people don't have pools here. <laughs> yeah, you know. So uh, since everything's closed, we usually go to um, the gym up there. Um, oh, Synergy. Synergy. But, uh, you know, yeah, everything it doesn't closed. look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. Well, that's interesting for a gym like that, right? Because it's not just the gym, but it's the pool. So, yeah. like, I wonder, I think gyms are pretty close to being able to open. I think so. Um, but I wonder if they will be able to open because of pool or maybe they have to close off the pool. Or I, I don't know how you can possibly socially distance in a pool. No, yeah, I know. There's no and way then, that you, you know, can monitor. Know it's taking a leak in the pool. Or, <laughs> I mean, you know, baby Ruth, you know, it's kind of... <laughs> Clear it out, you know. Yeah, but uh, ew, uh, you right. know, I, that's what I think about. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like gross, you know. But you know, and then you know, my wife tells me when you could smell the chlorine, and it gets you know stronger. Yeah, that means that it's working harder because somebody oh really you know, peed in it. So it's uh, there was always this it. um thing people used to. T- I grew up in Arizona, so we had pools in every backyard, oh, yeah. right? But I remember somebody saying. There was a certain kind of chlorine you could get so that if somebody peed, it would turn a color. So, sure. So you knew. But I never actually witnessed that happening. So it must have been like somebody just trying to scare me into not peeing in the pool. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I don't, <laughs> I've never, I've never seen you imagine. But that, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you'd want to see it. Like, I feel like that's one of those things. It's like, if I don't know, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Hopefully the chlorine is going to kill oh, it all. the damn dye packet I had in my yeah. trunks is going <laughs> off. You know, I don't I don't know what all this is. You know, it's kind of. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So, Greg, you now have, well, we're in COVID. Uh, yes. We're in shutdown. So you're not actively working, but no. you are my favorite tattoo artist Thank here you. in Petaluma. And can I just tell you, even just the other day, I am all the time, all the time getting stopped on the street by people asking me who did this tattoo and who did this one. Ah. All the time. And of course, I tell him. In fact, I have extra cards in my purse because I'm like, "Oh, who's Greg?" And here's now. Actually, I have your old cards, so ah. we probably need new ones. Um, but even just this weekend or Monday, Sunday or Monday, I went to Brewster's with mm-hmm. two, you know when they opened for outdoor seating, and even the hostess who was seating us like stops and she's like, "I have to know who did that tattoo. Is he local?" And so I'm telling everybody, oh, thank you, all the time about you. But now you have a new place. Oh, yes. You will have soon. Tell me yes, about it. Yes, I'll be working there. I'm not the owner, but um, my friend Nick has bought a whole building um, over on Petaluma Boulevard South, and it's across the street from Pinky's Pizza, and um, it, it's just done up really nice, and it's going to be really in a really nice shop. Wait, across the street, across Petaluma Boulevard, or across? yes, from Pinky's Pizza? Yeah, it's like kitty corner that okay you know and it's a whole house, and you can't miss it. It's re- painted really funky. It's like a I saw a picture, you know, red and cream, and like this greenish color yeah and, you know but the inside of the shop is going to be amazing and there's huge workspaces and 
you know, it's a whole house. So yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be a really cool thing, you know, and then, That's so exciting. you know, uh, hopefully it'll be the last place that I ever work, you know, I'm pushing yeah. 48 here, you know, since May 7th. You're so almost 48? Well, I am 48. You, you are. Know, yeah. Wow. You look like a baby. Ah, well. You have a baby I face. shaved a little. <laughs> I shaved during a. Uh, oh, that's true. Your beard yeah, is a it's, lot. Yeah, it's not hair. And you know, I during the whole thing, I you know, weekend, I was like, I you know, I think I'm going to shave, and you know, and my. Did you shave it all off or just trimmed it? I shaved it all off. <gasps> really? Yeah. What did your wife do? No, did she was she all it? for it. You know, yeah, I shave your face. You know, I have this little chin and another one behind that, <laughs> 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 and another Don't one and all. another one, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you know, I shaved. My daughter's all shave the beard because that's the thing. I didn't want to shave my beard and like scare her, scare her. She's and, so little, you know, yeah. yeah, but it, it turned out okay. I'll show you pictures. Later, oh but, yeah. But now it's growing back. Yeah, I see so, that. um, and I was going to shave my head today, but, but uh, then you had to come to a podcast. Yes. Yeah, so I was just like, ah, oh, well, you know, Darn I have some place to be. I kind of <laughs> shave my head, but yeah, the, the shop is, is, um, is going to be killer. And, you know, and our families are my daughter's best friends with his daughter um. and, you know, my wife's really good friends with his wife. So it's like, a, a we all have this like symbiotic, you know, relationship where, you know, we're all, yeah. you know, and there's another friend, Khalil, who moved to town and, and, you know, his, 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 uh, uh, partner and, um, Wendy and his son, Gus, you know, and I've, I've known Khalil since, um, probably 2000, maybe 1999, oh, wow. maybe 2000, 2001. But, uh, um, we've known each other forever and we've always been like good friends. And then it just so happens that his kid's birthday is two days after my daughter's birthday, you know, and there's a lot of this, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and Nick worked in the city um, a lot too for years. And I, I think I've met him once at art show, but never really got to know him until he moved up here. And then I, you know, I kind of reached out and, you know, worked at the same shop for a while and, uh, um, you know, became really, really good. We had, you know, we're just the Nick and Greg show, you know, that's yeah. what it is, you know, we just get along so well and bring that out of each other where we're just bouncing back and forth you know, um, artistically and just, you know, um, in conversation, yep. and, you know, so it's going to be really, 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 you know, cool. Thing. Fun to like just fun. to go to work every day. I mean, not that it wasn't fun before, but now you've got like y- your people and yeah, and, like, totally. It probably feels like coming home. Yeah. And I've had uh, a great time at any shop that I've worked yeah. at. And, you know, this will, I think be the 14th tattoo shop that I've worked Holy at Holy crap! Um, over the course of 30 years. So, um, you know, it'll, it's kind of like, all right, this is it, you know, yeah. no, no more moving around. You yeah. Know, kinda... I know we get old and then we just want to kind of like hang close to home, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's it's... nothing wrong with that, I guess. And you know what? There's so, Petaluma is so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, how long have you lived in Petaluma? Cause you were from LA and then you went to San Francisco, right? Yeah. I was or... from, I'm from LA and then I've been here for six years basically, okay. but, um, I grew up in LA. I was born in downtown and I was raised in East Los Angeles and then I apprenticed in West LA and then worked on Sunset Boulevard, maybe, God, 1992, mm-hmm. 93. And then, um, I moved up here with my uh, previous marriage and I have a son who's 24 as well. So, oh, I didn't um, know that. yeah, we moved to Guerneville and, um, Oh, Jesus. Uh, I know. I was like, <laughs> well, that's a culture a shock. guy from East LA moves to Kernville, Cal, you know, and it was just like a culture shock, but yeah. it was cool. And, you know, I just always pursued what I, you know, my dream of tattooing. And, and then, uh, there was no shops in Santa Rosa. There was two shops. And so I started commuting from Guerneville to San Francisco oh, on Jesus. Hate Street for six years. Yeah. Um, and I worked five days a week. So it was a long commute. It was like, said, so I always drive through Petaluma. And I remember where they put up that huge digital billboard of, you know, the auto plaza. And I was like, oh, this crazy digital billboard, billboard would tell you what time it was. And I would always say to myself, if I could just live in Petaluma, you know, I'd be fine with this. Yeah. It's, you know, it's fine. But uh, eventually, you know, I uh, moved to San Francisco and lived there for quite a long time and then uh, met my wife. And then she happened to be from Petaluma. And, you know, love Petal- I always loved Petaluma. Yeah. And then uh, moved up here, you know, got a house and you know, we're able to fortunate, you know, and grateful. And, um, we just been living there ever since, you know, yeah, a stone's throw from the studio. I, f- it's so funny. You're literally almost in my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, right yeah. The I, I see you guys. I see you. Well, when school was in, I would see you walking Ferris to school every, every now and then, or maybe walking home from school. I'm guessing, I'm guessing she was going, is she going to the school up, up, off of Bidig- Valley Bidig- Vista? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I realized as I'm saying that, I'm like, maybe we don't want to talk about where his daughter's <laughs> going to school. Okay. I have, 
I mean, literally for days, I've been thinking like all the tattoo questions that I have now I can actually ask them. I'm going to preface this by saying I fully am prepared to walk out of this podcast feeling like an idiot for asking some of these questions. Oh, but that, uh, I I never have a chance to ask you when you're tattooing on me because all I'm doing is trying to monitor my breathing right. while you're carving into my body so I can like uh, not you know, cry. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you did pretty well with your shoulder and your forearm, but I remember the gecko being. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the gecko, thing. which is weird and then because the elephants on I would have. Right? Uh, yeah, I would have thought that. Um, I, Kudos to you for even remembering all the ones that you've done because you I tattoo so everything many. Everything really, about, yeah. You and tattoo I'll, so many people. I've, I've tattooed over probably um, over ten thousand people over the course of um, I I did the math. Yeah, and you know I've I've just I just tattooed a lot of people oh, and shit. a lot of people I remember. Some people I don't, and then they'll show me the tattoo and I'll I'll remember everything about it. Yeah. You know, what we talked about, or it's just a weird thing. Okay, so here's, we're going to talk about the gecko, because okay. I'm having a serious, like, crisis of conscience about this stupid tattoo that I have. So, I it's a tramp stamp, <laughs> which <laughs> I can barely even say out loud, and I feel, it was like, you know, the typical 1990s mistake that every girl who's never had a tattoo is like, oh, I'm going to get a tattoo, and I'm going to get it on my back, so it, whatever. Um, and so I got this gecko and then that was back in, I think that was like 98 ish that I got that tattoo. Sounds like, you know, um, <laughs> based on how it looked. Yeah. No, well, no, so, just the, the, yeah, you know, people, the time, <laughs> the, the trend where people, the placement on the body, you know, changes yeah. all the time you totally. know, like with the years, you know, yeah. when you see that. So everyone's getting lower back tattoos mm-hmm. around that time. And now people are getting more stuff on the ribs or, you know, um, under, under boob, you know, yeah. or, so that's the news. So when I'm 80 years old, I'll be, ah, you okay. Know here's and- the, I think you should do a public service announcement to every one of your new clients that come in, for example, and say, I want a tattoo under my boob. And you say, this is great. I'll do whatever you want. I just want you to know that in 15 years, or 20 years, everybody's going to know what year it was when you got that tattoo. <laughs> I know. Well, I, you know, if, if, if I feel that I wouldn't be able to go home and go to sleep knowing that maybe I put a tattoo in a spot in the future would be not okay. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I just tell people, you know, you might want to get a lower and I explain why. Yeah. You know, just looking out for them because a lot of people see something in a magazine. You know, I, you know, I, I told somebody, you know, they're, it's going to blur over time, right? And yeah. they were just looked at me like, what? what? You know, and I was just like, <laughs> yeah, it's going to, you know. Yeah, your skin's going to. Look grow. at my arm here. Check this out. Look at that. See, that used to be a letter. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So I got the gecko and then I did come to you. I don't know. It's probably been about a year or so. And I asked you to kind of clean it up a little bit, right? So we mm. did some white ink around it to kind of, because it was just lines. Sure. Um, Here's my thing. It's like, I don't, for this reason that we're speaking about, like, there's two reasons why I don't want that tattoo anymore. So I'm thinking about having it lasered off. So first of all, I'm going to have, I'm going to ask your thoughts about that, but here's the reason I'm, I want another and I'm very, um, I want it to be on my back Mm -hmm. somewhere. I have some ideas. We can, we can talk about that offline. But I feel like that stupid one on my lower back is just going to fuck up the whole thing. Sure. So there's that. Plus, there's the thing of it being a tramp stamp. But mostly, it's that the one that I want to get on my back, and I'm, I just I don't want to see the gecko at the same time. So yeah, or have about, a like, dark spot of something you know that the eye will be drawn to. You yeah. Know, maybe a little it's just bit not very pretty. And, it's the thing is, it's like you've done the other ones, and and. All of the other ones that you've done, there was, for me, there's some meaning behind it. That one was just, you know, I was, I was that girl that was in her twenties and was like, dad, just do it. Um, and so it was fine for a while, but now it's like, I want, I kind of, I'm more interested in art that's meaningful. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just fucks the whole thing up. So I've been like, should I just have it lasered off? People keep saying, well, no, like have him build it into something else. I know that's very common, but. It doesn't solve the placement problem. Yeah. You know, if, if, it, if it's that much of an issue for you, I would just get the fucking thing lasered off, you know, seriously. And then you don't have to deal with it. You can start with this fresh slate. So is because, that legit, the lasering, or does you yeah, still see it? Yeah. Yeah. It hurts, though. I've never had it done to myself, but, you know, um, I've heard it, it feels like a rubber band snapping your skin over and over. And it feels a little bit worse than actually getting a tattoo. Yeah. Where tattooing is more of like a, 
burning cessation or a hot rake. <laughs> a hot rake or a rubber band snap. 